بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم يا عظيم السلطان يا قديم الإحسان يا دائم النعم يا كثير الجود يا واسع العطاء يا خفي اللطف يا جميل الصنع يا حل من لا يعجل صل يا ربي على سيدنا محمد وآله وسلم وارض عن الصحابة أجمعين اللهم لك الحمد شكرا ولك المن فضلا وأنت ربنا حقا ونحن عبيدك رقا وأنت لم تزل ذلك أهلا يا ميسر كل عسير ويا جابر كل كسير ويا صاحب كل فريد ويا مغني كل فقير ويا مقوي كل ضعيف ويا مأمن كل مخيف يسر علينا كل عسير فتيسير العسير عليك يسير اللهم يا من لا يحتاج إلى البيان والتفسير حاجاتنا كثير وأنت عالم بها خبير اللهم إني أخاف منك وأخاف مما يخاف منك وأخاف ممن لا يخاف منك اللهم بحق من يخاف منك نجنا ممن لا يخاف منك اللهم بحق سيدنا محمد أحرسنا بعينك التي لا تنام وكنفنا بكنفك الذي لا يرام وارحمنا بقدرتك علينا فلا نهلك وأنت ثقتنا ورجاؤنا صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه وميداد كلماته اللهم إنا نسألك زيادة في الدين وبركة في العمر وصحة في الجسد وسعة في الرزق وتابدا قبل الموت وشهادة عند الموت مغفرة عند بعد الموت وعفوا عند الحساب وأمان من العذاب ونصيب من الجنة ورزقنا النظر إلى وجهك الكريم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم everyone and welcome to the nothing but facts live stream nothing with an apostrophe not nothing nothing with an apostrophe you have to you gotta remember that apostrophe uh, nothing but facts live stream where only interested in facts and not interested in any nonsense. Um, so today, we're let's move on to. There's not really much news today. Uh, Devil's Advocate hasn't re released any new posts or anything, so there's nothing fun to talk about. Uh, but let's get straight to back to our durud and salam. Uh, durud, of course, being the Urdu you know, word for salah and salam, and Urdu and. If you're in the West, Western Hemisphere, even if you're in Arabia, the uh, subcontinental culture, whether it's language, food, it's, it's part of the culture, right? So um, you go to Mecca, there's more uh, Desi food than anything else. It's part of the culture. So because their, their numbers are so strong and they care about the deen, they're always around. So we talk here about some of the, we talked about the four the angles that we view the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we talk about the Prophet, we talk about the love of the Messenger. And it's very important to understand that the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not like other loves. The love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not natural. You can't explain it the same way that people explain the love of other things. Uh, I can explain my love for you, your love for your children. You can explain your love for your uh, wife, right? And it's understood. Everyone understands this. You can explain the love of your friends. Everyone understands this. You, you have like interests, you have the same politics, you have the same hobbies, you're whatever. But the love of the Messenger, Sallallahu is not explained by these normal, everyday occurrences. You, it's really hard to explain how you love somebody that lived 1400 years ago. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is very simple. It is no different than Iman in the sense that it is something Allah places in the hearts of the believers. It's like a, it's a muda. It's something that Allah places there, and that really is the only explanation. Because by any logic, by any everyday means, you have nothing to do with someone lived fourteen hundred years ago in a different era, in a different continent, and you never met him, and he never met you. So there is something going to be that's going to be different about it. And 
we don't have to explain, the proof is in the pudding, the, the Muslim ummah for this, man, this many centuries and years has loved their messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the proof is just in, look at the books, look at the literature, look at the songs, look at the holidays, look at everything that the Muslims have done for the Prophet, look at their naming of their children. You don't have to try to justify the, na- the, the fact that the Muslims love their Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that much, okay, it's in plain sight. It's obvious. It's not something that it's a claim that's empty. It's not an empty claim. I mean, you can go and say blasphemous things about Moses all day, okay, and nobody's going to do anything about it. You can make a play about Jesus being uh, whatever, okay? Nothing's going to happen. You say a word about the Prophet, and you're, you're taking a risk, and I'm not advocating that type of violence, right? We don't advocate that, but I am have to warn you that you're taking a risk. Anyone says a word about the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you never know what's going to happen, right? Uh, in any event, uh, the fact that Muslims love their Prophet, it's really a test and, it, and it, it makes no rational sense that you can't explain it in the same way that you love an inventor or you love a friend or you love a wife. So the only real answer is that it's something that Allah places into the hearts of the believers. And that's how simple it is. It's something that as soon as you take one, two steps towards the Prophet wasallam sunnah by acting upon it, it's as if this like you magnetically attract this love of the Messenger wasallam, and it just grows thereafter, it grows after that. All right. So that's the concept and the idea of, of where this love of the Prophet, it's not a natural love. In the same way that many husband and wives, they're, uh, okay, what happens when the attraction is gone? Uh, he, was, he was rich and handsome and great, now he's not. Well, why are they still together? Uh, because she's in need. Well, what if she's rich? Okay, she could walk away and marry some other guy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّ وَرَحْمَةً If the both husband and wife are pious, that Allah ta'ala places between them, places among, inside of them, this mahabba. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّ وَرَحْمَةً So this mahabba is placed inside of their hearts. That's how a marriage lasts for such a long time. If both sides have taqwa, it's a gift. So there is a natural explanation for spousal love between one another, but there's also this extra and unnatural, and we can call it a bestowal from, uh, from Allah, a, 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 a hibah, okay? a gift that Allah Ta'ala places. And it's the same thing with the love of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not something that's natural in any way, shape, and form. You never saw him. Okay, you never lived in the same time period, and yet you love him so much, and it's not a lie, it's not fake. People can't lie this long. People can't fake it for, for so many centuries. Okay, it's real. So it's something that Allah places, just like He places Iman Billah, He places Iman bi Rasulillah, wa Mahabbat Rasulillah, He places it in their hearts. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at the various masail pertaining to the Salah on the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one, we talked about the number, and it's very important to understand the fiqh of these numbers that you may see in some of the books, 300 salawats, 1,000 salawats. And we said that there are two opinions on this, and the one, they're both valid opinions. The one opinion is that any uh, uh, attachment of a number is a bid'ah. We accept that opinion. It's a valid opinion. Now, the other opinion says, makes a tafsil of the, t- the, the reason why a person places a number. So I'm going to do a thousand salawats. Okay, well, why? Do you believe that that number has something special about it? That would be the bid'ah. Because only the messenger can assign a number that there's some barakah to that number. But if the assignment of a number is for i'anat al muwadhaba this is what they say, i'anat al muwadhaba to help me just to keep a pace or to keep a schedule, then they say this is permissible. Okay? Because you don't hold that that number has it. So whether I do a thousand, a thousand and two, nine hundred and ninety-eight, no, they're, 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 it's just for muwadhaba's purposes. Ya'anat al muwadhaba, all right, which is to help you be consistent. In the same way, there's ijma that it's permissible to say we're going to open a school and study lugha from seven to eight, fiqh from eight to nine. We're going to um, uh, from nine to ten. We're going to study hadith. Etc. Etc. Who said to study for one hour fiqh and one hour? Nobody said there's a special barakah there. No, but it's the muwadhaba al i'ana al muwadhaba to help you be consistent upon something. You don't see human beings do anything except that they always they have a schedule and a system. 
All right. So that's the uh, uh, issue, issue or the answer regarding the numbers. Okay. We then said the love of the messenger leads to firm belief in him. Firm belief in him must lead to obedience of him. And obedience of him is, part of obedience of him is making salah and salam upon him. Now, how do we make salah and salam upon him and when? When is it fard? When is it sunnah? Now, there is some discussion. There is ijma that to say salah and salam on the Prophet ﷺ once in your lifetime is fard. Ayn on every Muslim uh, because of the commandment in Surah Al-Ahzab. Okay. Now, the question then, when you're in a gathering or a talk, in the same way we are here, or you're reading a book, or you're writing a book, it, when is, is it fard to say salah and salam on the Prophet ﷺ? The first time or all the time? Again, there are two opinions on this. The first opinion is one of ease and the second is one of caution. The first one says, the first time you hear the name of the messenger is fard to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second time, that, uh, thereafter, when you hear it in the same talk or in the same narration or story, then it's mandub to say it. It's a sunnah, nafila, to say it again. Right? Uh, in the second opinion is more opinion of caution and ta'zim. Okay? Caution and to ta'zim of the Prophet ﷺ is that it is fard to say it every single time. Okay? All right? It's a fard to say it every single time. So there's two different opinions on this. All right. The next mas'ala is that the Prophet ﷺ said, the person is a miser who hears my name and does not say salam upon me. Who is he a miser? He's a miser upon himself. The messenger is saying he's a miser upon himself because you're not giving yourself uh, um, hasanat. And there's an, there's, he's going to tell you here a story about a scholar who... Uh, it's Ibn Hajr al-Makki. He stated that there was once a scribe that he used to write Sallallahu Alaihi Okay? After the name of the Prophet Sallallahu And he wouldn't write Wasallam. And the reason was that he wanted to save paper. So that man saw the Prophet in his dream and the man and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Why do you deprive yourself of 40 hasanat every time my name is mentioned? Right? And he said, how is there 40 hasanat? He said, or actually he began, and as the Prophet ﷺ always begins, he says, why do you deprive yourself of 40? The man said, 40 what? He, the Prophet said, why do you deprive yourself of 40? So the man kept saying, what am I depriving myself? 40 what? Right? And then the Prophet explained to him, when you don't write wasallam, it's four letters. Each letter is 10 hasanat. Okay? So then the man from then on, he began to say wasallam. Okay, now in Salah, when is Salah and Salam on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam observed? It's observed in Tashahud. Okay, the place in Salah for Salah and Salam on the Messenger is in Tashahud. Okay, again, for those who are maybe not even Muslim that are listening, when the Prophet Muhammad's name is mentioned, we recite a prayer that uh, to, to, to bring down from his imdad, his madad, and that prayer is to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah bless him and grant him peace. Okay, many non Muslims, they don't have this for Jesus. Right? They just say Jesus. We don't even just say Jesus. We say, Alayhi Salam. When you say the name of a messenger, or, or the, the messenger, Muhammad, you say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you recite the name of any other prophet, you say, Upon him peace, Alayhi Salam. Or you may say, Ala Nabiyina wa Alayhi Assalatu Wasallam. Upon our Prophet and upon him, Salah and Salam. When you mention a uh, from the Salaf, the Sahaba, or the Tabi'een, you say, Radiallahu Anhum. Right? May Allah be pleased with them. First three generations. When you say, upon anyone else who's passed away, you say, Alayhi Rahmatullah. Right? Upon him is the mercy Allah, of Allah. Uh, some people say that when a Zalim, when an oppressor is mentioned, you say, Lahu min Allahi ma yastahiq. All right, may Allah give him what he deserves. And that's pretty rough because nobody wants to... Would you like to receive what you deserve? All right? We all commit some sins, but some people do say that. Alayhi min Allahi ma Upon him from, from Allah is what he deserves. All right? And the justice of... Punishment is Allah, divine justice. All divine punishment is... It's out of justice. 
and all of divine reward is out of generosity. Okay, so now we talk about in the Jum'ah Khutbah, okay, when you hear the Salah and Salam on the Prophet ﷺ, you should recite it to yourself, not out loud, so that you don't distract the people from the Khatib. Uh, it, you do not have to have wudu or ghusl or anything to recite Salah and Salam on the Prophet ﷺ, although it is always afdal, it's better. All right. All right. It is makru to intentionally do as a ibadah, recite Salah and Salam upon another Prophet, like as a dhikr. So you can say Salah and Salam on the Prophet ﷺ as a ibadah, as a dhikr. Uh, as long as you want, uh, on intention. But all other MBA, we don't, they don't, we don't do that for them as a dhikr. Only if we remember them, if their name comes up, then we may say, alayhi wa ala nabina as-salatu was salam. Okay? Sayyidina Nuh, alayhi salam. But nobody sits there, it would be a bid'ah, someone to do, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Nuh, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Nuh, sallallahu ala Sayyidina Nuh. That would be an, an, an innovation that none of the Sahaba did. Okay, in terms of their, their words. All right. So likewise, uh, uh, you would not do that for the Al or the Sahaba. It would not be a ibadah say, Allahumma rda'an ashabi Rasulillah, Allahumma rda'an ali bayti Rasulillah, without mentioning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So you have to mention the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa first. Okay. Uh, what else do you have? When you write it, in writing the Salah and Salam, it is makru and it's considered disrespectful to shorten it to sad lam ayn meem, okay, or PBUH or capital S or SAWS. All of that is considered by majority, by unanimously by the ulama as makru. It's disrespectful. It should stop. Uh, we need to save paper. You have a 30 page document, right? You already have a 30 page document. You see people, they write you this long email. The email is 10 pages long. So that's not what's going to make it any longer. Secondly, you don't want the hasanat? Leave it. Don't do it. Okay. There was once a man, this is written in one of the books, that there was once a man that he, he didn't write to do this. He never wrote, he never wrote anything because he wanted to save paper. Never wrote salah and said, I'm on the Prophet because he wanted to save paper. So what did they write about him? They said, this man developed... In ailment, he was a scribe. But all the scribes, if you notice, they get an arch back, they get bad vision, and they get arthritis in their arms. In the olden days, you could tell a scribe from a mile away, because unless they took care of themselves, and they didn't really have massage exercise and all that back in the day, right? So if they didn't take care of themselves, they were ended up being these hunchbacks, right? With, with gnarly fingers. Well, he developed this ailment in his hand a lot earlier than everybody else, and he had to retire early. Right? And they say that they, they warned him, you refuse to write sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, it's not fard, it's not fard. And they, people, see the thing is, people, they have a crazy idea, then they make a narrative out of it. Right? They make a theology out of it. They make a law out of it and to justify it to themselves. Where sometimes you should just listen to your heart. Right? And your heart's telling you, have some respect. Listen to the other people around you. Allah's not going to have all the Muslims are on this idea here and, and you're on something different. Uh, how about to write to say Muhammad or to say Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Well, the answer is according to the uh, ulama is to say Sayyidina Muhammad. Why? Because he said, "Ana Sayyid waladi Adam wa la and he said about Al Hasan, "Inn Abni Hada Sayyid." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi himself said, "I'm the Sayyid of all people." Okay. Why? Because the wrath of Allah only quells and becomes mercy after the prostration of Muhammad Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet, peace be upon him. So therefore, everyone will owe him on that day their salvation. So he's the Sayyid of all people. He's the chief of all people. Okay, that's our belief. You, you get your beliefs, you, some of the listeners. You have your beliefs and the viewers. All right, let's see who's out there today. You got your beliefs. You might believe in evolution. You might believe in other things. I'm glad you have you express your beliefs so I could know. Like I know what you believe now. Then I know how to speak to you, right? In a way that's appropriate. And and you and, and if to speak to you, right? And now you know my belief. So you know how to speak to me and what my point of reference is. 
The point of reference of Muslims is that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the greatest of all creation. All right? And so that's why we say he's our chief, our master, Muhammad وسلم. He's the one who said, Ana Sayyid Walidi Adam, wala fakr. I'm the chief of, the, uh, uh, of all people and without any boasting. In other words, he has the humility to match that maqam. He's just informing us of his status so that we know what his status is. He also said that his grandson is a Sayyid. If he is assigning Siyadah, then he's the Sayyid. The one who assigns who is a Sayyid and who isn't, he is the one who he also must be a Sayyid. So why did the Prophet ﷺ specifically specify Al-Hasan over everyone else? Why? What is a Sayyid? A Sayyid is the chief, like the chief of the tribe. What does Al-Hasan do in his career and his life? Isn't he the Khalifa? He's the Khalifa. He's the fifth Khalifa. But when he sees that there's going to be a civil war, he abdicates his caliphate to Sayyidina Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. So he, re he relinquishes the cloak of rulership. When he relinquishes it, people think he's not a chief. So the Prophet ﷺ is emphasizing, I'm telling you, even in his abdication of the caliphate, he's the, he's the chief. Because he's the one who... If you can give the caliphate, then you're the real caliph, right or wrong, right? So there was one time one of the Roman emperors, okay? The Pope and the Roman emperor, they had this, there was a new Pope and a new Holy Roman emperor, right? When they had this Holy Roman Empire. So the king that, the Pope then said, come so I can make you the king, right? The king was a little bit of a gangster. He's like, if you make me the king and you put the crown on my head, doesn't that make you more powerful than me? He said, nah, I'll pass on that. I'm king, making myself king. So he was a gangster type. So the one who can make someone a caliph, isn't he the caliph? So the Prophet ﷺ is emphasizing to us Al-Hasan. When he abdicated the throne, it was not of weakness. Okay? Or not the throne, but the khilafah. It, he's still the Sayyid. Okay? He's still the chief of the Muslims. Right? That's why he says, In Abni Hada Sayyid. Okay. So the Prophet is Sayyid. And if you don't like to say it, then you have kibr. And you need to be humbled a little bit. When, when reciting hadith and any speech and mention of the Prophet وسلم, a person must, must uh, uh, not be engaged in jest, in lahu, in la'ib, in, um, in any kind of silliness, okay, uh, because that would be disrespectful. And they used to say in Imam Malik, subhanAllah, there was uh, an, a man by the name of Sulaiman. And Malik, he used to see him. And a lot of scholars were, were reciting hadith from him in Mecca. Said Imam Malik was in Umrah and he saw him again. He refused to take hadith from him, okay. They said, why? He says, because I see him narrating hadith while walking. He narrates to the students hadith while they're walking. It's no, his man has no respect for the Prophet ﷺ. Until finally, one day, the Prophet, they say, they say, Imam Malik saw him talking about the Prophet ﷺ and weeping. And when he saw that, then he said, now I'll take hadith from him. Right? And Imam Malik narrates from him in his muwatta. Remember, who was Imam Malik's teacher regarding love of the Prophet ﷺ? Sayyidina Jafar al-Sadiq. That's who was his teacher. Uh, his sheikh, essentially, in this matter, was Jafar al-Sadiq. And Sayyidina Jafar al-Sadiq, he said that nobody joked more than Jafar al-Sadiq until the name of the Prophet ﷺ came up. Then he was uh, completely uh, just changed and he altered his position. He would sit up he would become uh, uh, full of awe and he would be mumbling salah and salam on the Prophet ﷺ. And Imam Malik himself took on those features and he reached the, the maqam or the hal that he, every single day, every night, he saw the Messenger ﷺ said, if I wake up one day and I don't see the Prophet ﷺ, I consider myself a munafiq. All right, so... All right, so reminder, remember for everyone, classes are starting this Sunday. And even if you don't attend, we have 30 live classes at safinasociety.org. All right, we have 30 live classes, uh, 30 pre-recorded classes. 
right, at safinasociety.org. So don't miss out on these uh, and sign up and uh, you can be part of the WhatsApp group. You can be part of uh, the Q&A sessions and you'll get all sorts of uh, perks along the way as well as studying. And what is a student of knowledge? A student of knowledge is somebody who starts now to organize their knowledge. Okay, These are talks. They're floating around, knowledge that floats around in your head. But a student of knowledge is somebody who starts learning what are the sources of knowledge and what is the curriculum of a student to the point that this person starts now becoming you know, learned. Right? Now, what does learned mean? Like, what is a house? How do you build a house? There is a beginning and there's an end. Right? Now, there may not be an end to knowledge, but there is definitely a demarcation that says you're a beginner, you're intermediate, you're advanced, you're a scholar. Okay? Uh, and, and we have that. And then you're a mufti, and you're a mufti inside the madhab, and you're a muf, mufti for new matters, etc. So, uh, you need to be part of this. And it doesn't have to be something that you think that, oh, I can only you know, do this if I'm full-time. or No, not at all. If you, if you did 20 minutes a day, Okay, if you did twenty minutes a day or twenty minutes a, a one hour a week, you, you can become you can become learned quickly. All right, let's take some questions. How do you respond to the people? This is from Fayyazuddin Ahmed Sayyid. Okay, he says, who say that if Allah knows the unseen, knows the future, then why does He become pleased or angry towards His servants? Allah's pleasure and His anger towards his servants is, is that he places mercy upon them or he places la'an upon him. He removes mercy upon them and, and places upon them, uh, his anger. And that is, um, if he knows what happens, it has nothing to do with him not giving free will to the people and letting them write their own destiny in the sense that they do their own deeds. Of course, all destiny is written and is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of our actions are creations of Allah ta'ala. That's just like an expression. But in order to answer the question, people who are in heaven and hell, if they go to hell, they say, hey, I didn't get a chance. All right, Allah's given you a chance. Right? And if someone is created, just thrown into heaven, he won't appreciate it. Right? So he's got to live in and, and, and work for it. وَقُلْ اِعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ do deeds, do action, all right? Allah will see your actions. Uh, so that you yourselves is a, is a witness on your own self. So that when Allah Ta'ala fulfills the destiny that He knows and puts those in hell in hell and those in heaven in heaven, nobody could say, hey, He didn't do anything to deserve that. We say, oh, let's rewind the tape, okay? The human being is a, 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 is a witness against his own self. Let's rewind the tape. You're telling me he didn't do anything? Here, he did. He did this, this, this. That's why he's going to heaven. And how about you? Why is he going to, why am I going to hell? All right, let's rewind the tape. Okay? Let's look at what you did in your life. Let's put it in slow motion. Boom, this is what you did. Okay? So, so that nobody could say, when their destiny is fulfilled, I never got a chance. This is oppression. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these choices. Jihan Ali, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim salatan tarda biha anna wa turdihi wa tuqirru aynahu bina. Good. Is prayer valid without salat on the Prophet? You have to make salat on the Prophet, Sayyid Sallam. In the Shafi'i Madhab, it's wajib, and in the Madhab, madhab it is sunnah. Are the classes only for U.S. residents? No, not at all. We have students from Malaysia. We have students from Pakistan, Bangladesh, England, and they follow the recordings. They, co they comment on the Q&A, on the chats and everything, right? So uh, uh, the WhatsApp groups. If you, if you registered and didn't get on the WhatsApp group, just send us a message. We'll get you on. All right, someone says, you can't, can you talk too much about the Prophet Sallallahu And, well, it's very simple. Uh, uh, Aisha Mukhtar says UK based actually the majority of our students are actually UK UK is actually bigger than US we should probably you know wake up earlier and do the classes earlier so that the students you know cater to these US students Kimberly Torres uh, Shalili says I think I pronounced that right 
Uh, what about groups of dhikr on our Nabi? Is this permitted? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, uh, the group dhikr, Imam al Nawi has a whole chapter on it in the ch- uh, book of uh, uh, Adab al Hamlat al Quran. And he says that there are two opinions upon this one permitting it and one prohibiting it. So we have to respect both opinions. That uh, there is an opinion that it is a bid'ah, and there is an opinion that it is an acceptable based upon the fact that. Uh, dhikr in group is done before Eid, etc. It's done in many times that the Sahaba did it on the way to battle. They made it in, made it in different times while digging the trench. Uh, they sang Tala al Badru alayna. There's so many times where the Sahaba did that in the presence of the Prophet, وسلم, and he didn't permit it, uh, forbid it, sorry. He didn't forbid it. So there are two opinions. We have to respect both opinions. Okay, so. Um, we're looking now, can you make, what was I saying? I think I was saying something before I, uh, I interrupted myself. Muhammad al-Naqshabandi says, can you make wudu while having water-soluble wax on your hair? The water has to touch your hair, and I think it's in the Shafi'i Madhab, only like three hairs, right? And in the Hanafi Madhab, it's like a quarter of your hair. In the Maliki Madhab, it's your whole hair. So maybe you can be a Shafi if that's in the situation. You just need to get at least three hairs. Okay, because in the Shafi Madhab, um, they say that, you know, it's, it's general. The, hair, the mention of the head is general, and therefore the least of that would be three hairs. All right, then we have Semya Batut. Is this the Semya that is from the Arabic classes? If so, then yes. We have students in France. We have students in Belgium. Right, so and and we're getting now classes in Czech, and we have in Spanish. I I don't know if Torres I think is Spanish, right? I'm assuming. Right, so Alhamdulillah. All right, it's a pretty light day today. Anyone else have any questions? If not, we'll wrap up. And of course, there are always questions. Some comes up during injury time. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all right again injury time question from ذكوان شوكت علي he says السلام عليكم for sunnah غير مؤكد عن في ماذا do you have to read durud dua in second raka I'm not sure, familiar with the details of the Hanafi Madhab, but you should do it, Salah Ibrahimi and the Sakir Raka, you should do it regardless, just out of a piety element, if not a fiqhi or ruling, just out of a personal piety aspect. All right, folks, thank you all very much. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.